I'm Les Guthman, director of LIGO, a documentary, here at the Mammoth Lakes Film Festival. LIGO is about the discovery of gravitational waves from deep space, the collision of two black holes, the collision of two neutron stars, which won an almost immediate Nobel Prize in 2017. I got involved in the project by being invited by the LIGO laboratory to make the film. They were upgrading, they had just, LIGO had just spent five years and $200 million upgrading its two detectors, one in Louisiana, one in Washington State, which they felt would give them the sensitivity to make the detections. And they asked me if I wanted to make a documentary about what they expected to be uh, a historic discovery, maybe a year, maybe a year and a half away. And I said, great. And we got a National Science Foundation grant, uh, so we were off and running. When we talked about the project, they said, well, we're gonna turn on this upgrade in September of 2015, and it'll be a year or a year and a half, it might be two years until we make the detection, because we're gonna take it slowly. And they asked me, do you wanna hang with us? Are you willing to hang with us for that two years? And I, or a year and a half, I said, sure, it sounds so exciting. And it turned out that uh, I took my crew to the Louisiana Observatory for the launch of this advanced LIGO, they called it, and the detection came in, and the, detec and the detection came in uh, two days before the official launch, before all of the systems were fully in place and took them completely by surprise. And at 4 a.m. we were in our hotel room. Uh, well, no, they didn't expect it for a year, so it was completely unexpected. So the answer is no, we were in our hotel room, but we were asked by the security uh, staff at the observatory. They went around and asked everyone, where were you at 4.50 in the morning okay. on the morning of September 14th? So we could say yes, we were at our hotel in Baton Rouge. Yeah. Awesome. So that was our, our first shoot was in August of 2015 and our last shoot was in Stockholm for this magic week of the Nobel Prize ceremonies in uh, December of 2017. So two years plus a few months. Never thought we'd end up, I mean, it wasn't even uh, consideration. Uh, and everyone else, they were as surprised. Once they made the detection, then people thought it was possible, if not likely, that at least two of the physicists would win the Nobel Prize. But you never know, they, might, they may not have won it for five years. It might have been 10 years later. Well, we've had a great success on the f film festival circuit. It's not released yet. We've been in 18 film festivals. We've won nine awards. And uh, we've got a terrific response, uh, particularly from the scientific community. My intention to keep as much com of the complexity of the science and as to tell as much of the story of this amazing two-year run of scientific discovery has been rewarded by recognition from the science community, first of all, and from the film community, too, that we really created something uh, special. With Caltech's uh, support, we received a National Science Foundation grant to help fund the film, and part of that grant called for creating an, a, a video series that would be available on YouTube for students and other uh, people who are interested in LIGO to provide more information and different kinds of information than we could provide in the documentary. So there is an eight-part series uh, called LIGO, A Discovery That Shook the World uh, on YouTube. And uh, episode six is uh, one of those eight episodes. The last episode is LIGO and beyond, and it talks about what the future holds for LIGO. In the meantime, LIGO conducted a third observation run, and they're gonna start a fourth observation run next year. From the third observation run, they've made dozens of amazing discoveries, which they're now telling the world about. So I will cover that period in the, um, in the video series, but I don't think that at, at, at the, I don't think there's another documentary. I think this tells the story of that amazing run of scientific discovery. I started out in production as a story editor of an amazing series on public television, which was funded by the Ford Foundation to produce independent films and full 90-minute stage productions at KCET in Los Angeles called Visions. One of our films won an, uh, 
one of our films won an award at the Cannes Film Festival. Our budgets were about $275,000. And this film, All on Brista, by the director Robert Young, won the uh, new director prize, the, uh, the, old, the uh, I can't remember the name of the, the award. Won this, this film, Alambrista, won the, uh, a major award at the Cannes Film Festival for the director, Robert Young. And then I, uh, I went to NBC News after that, and um, I worked in New York as a producer and writer for Tom Brokaw, which is a great way to learn all of the skills of documentary uh, production. Uh, I was at NBC in New York for nine years, and then I approached Discover Magazine with a proposal to create, a, I wanted to produce my own programs. And I approached Discover Magazine with a proposal to create a series based on Discover. Um, and I worked out the rights situation. I, I earned the rights to create this series and I sold it to the Walt Disney Company in six weeks. So I created and produced the Discover Magazine series at the Disney Company. And then a few years later, I was approached by Outside Magazine to create a production division of Outside. And Outside Magazine at that time had won three National Magazine Awards in a, in a row for, 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 uh, na for general excellence. And was a very, and was a very, and Outside Magazine at that time was a very successful magazine. And the prospect of creating a production division based on outside was just uh, too good to turn down. So I created Outside Television and ran that production company for nine years. Uh, and after that, um, I've been, I ran the documentary pro, after Outside Television, I ran the documentary program at the Annenberg Foundation for two years, Explore. And since then, I've been producing uh, and directing and editing documentaries on my own. I made, a, I made a documentary on the Cassini mission to Saturn with Carol and Porco. And in that documentary, I really wanted to do, tell, and in that documentary, I really wanted to, to let Carolyn tell the story of that amazing discovery in her own words, without a narrator, without um, you know, someone else telling. So Carolyn did tell the story in her own words, and that's uh, Saturn's embrace which is distributed on Amazon uh, Prime. For the moment, I'm very happy to continue. I have the funds to finish three more episodes of our LIGO series. And I've waited through the COVID restrictions because I really, I felt that I wanted to continue to interview in person. And, um, and there wasn't a time pressure. In the meantime, they've been announcing new terrific discoveries. So I have more material now than I would have had last year had I gone ahead with that production. So I've spent COVID keeping up with LIGO and talking to my friends and reading the papers of the scientists and planning the next three episodes of our video series. And I hope that soon we can go back into production.